T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And lift off. Pitching down range. Take on chamber pressures nominal. T plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying All the right, TurkSat 5B satellite to geosynchronous transfer orbit. We've throttled down in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Good views from the SpaceX ground cameras following the first stage. Okay, supersonic. We've gone supersonic. The Merlin engines are back up to full power. Max Q. And we're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Everything continues to look good. Trajectory is nominal. Avionics report systems are nominal. One hundred seconds into flight coming up in just under a minute. We're going to have main engine cutoff where we shut off the nine Merlin 1D engines. We'll separate the stages. And then the second stage engine will ignite at about the two minute and 44 second mark. MVAC is chilling in. The MVAC D engine chill in call out. We've begun putting a little bit of liquid oxygen through the turbo pump to get it cold in preparation for second stage ignition. That's coming up in just about 34 seconds from now. First stage is coming up on 4G's acceleration and we're gonna begin throttling down to hold 4G's. Getting ready for main engine cutoff.
stage engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. We've got successful stage separation. The second stage now under power of the single Merlin vacuum engine. We'll be coming up on fairing deploy in a little under 30 seconds. Views of the titanium grid fins de beginning to deploy on the left as we see the lights of Florida in the background as we head east, due east from the Cape into our transfer orbit parking orbit. We're getting ready for the camera on second stage to switch forward to look at the spacecraft and the payload fairing for fairing deploy. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you see the two fairing halves have separated, falling away from the vehicle. We're now exposing the Turksat 5B satellite to outer space. As a reminder, we will be attempting to retrieve these two fairing halves with the help of our recovery vessel, Bob. Now, as mentioned previously, these two fairing halves supported the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 5 mission in June of this year. But right now, we're at T plus four minutes and counting. We had a successful launch from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral, and we're currently watching the second stage on the right-hand side of your screen enter orbit with the left-hand left side of your screen. The first stage is heading back to our drone ship in the Atlantic, a shortfall of Gravitas. Let's watch out for that landing, that entry burn begin in just a moment. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry startup. Really bright from that entry burn start. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. And there it looks like we've had a successful entry burn shutdown. Um, if you noticed on the launch pad, the, the Falcon 9, um, is not when the Falcon 9 makes its way back to Earth, you may notice some different soot markings on the outer side, or the outer edges of the rocket. If you ever wondered how those soot markings are formed, it's because the soot is generated when the carbon-based rocket-grade kerosene RP-1 burns. Since re-entry occurs engines first, the booster flies through its own plume, which deposits the soot on the rocket, and you can see some of those sparks and soot flying up at the camera there on the left-hand side. Terminal guidance. Again, as a quick recap, we had a successful liftoff at 10.58 p.m. from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. A successful separation of the first and second stages. Uh, the first stage, stage is on its way back to our drone ship, a, a, uh, a shortfall of Gravitas in the Atlantic stage Ocean. Stage two, FTS is saved. And the second stage is heading to its initial orbital insertion with the TurkSat 5B satellite. We're coming up on a couple of events, Seco 1 and Landing Burn. And back engine cutoff. Stage one landing burn. Had a successful second engine cutoff and nominal orbit. The insertion. landing burn has just started. And we just heard good orbit. Confirmed a nominal orbital insertion. We're now Stage waiting on our Falcon to deploy. land on drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it. That's SpaceX's 99th successful booster landing, as well as SpaceX's 78th mission flying a refill and booster. Our mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its coast phase. But to put us into the geotransfer orbit. And back restart ignition. We've got ignition of the second stage engine. We're up on power. Now at this point, the second stage will burn for about one minute before shutting down for the second time. This shutdown event 
is called SECO2, which stands for second stage engine cutoff number two. And this burn will place the Turksat 5B satellite into the required orbit prior to separating it from the Falcon 9. Now, as you can see, during this burn, we're gonna add about 2,700 meters per second, almost 6,000 miles per hour to the speed of the Falcon 9 second stage. And that's gonna take us well in excess of the, F, the standard geo orbit of 35,000 kilometers. We're hearing tank pressure is looking good. Engine performance looks nominal. Get a good view right here. Payload separation confirmed. And there you have it. We've received a successful separation of the Turksat 5B satellite from the Falcon 9 second stage, which now brings today's webcast coverage to a close. Thank you to Airbus for entrusting the, us with the Turksat 5B satellite. A big thank you to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration. We really appreciate having your support for today's mission. It's been an exciting day here at SpaceX, having supported two missions within roughly 18-hour time frame. But as we mentioned before, it doesn't end there. Be sure to, to be sure to join us for the next cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station with the CRS-24 mission, currently targeted for Tuesday, December 21st at 5:06 a.m. Eastern Time. And to all our viewers.